What's up, friends? My name is Gio. I'm here to explore the frontier of AI art and UX design for actionable nuggets that you can apply to your creative life. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use your own sketches and artwork and imagery to influence the output of AI tools like Midjourney, which produce amazing results on their own, but aren't exactly the results you might be looking for. So I'm going to show you how to get closer to the mark using your own imagery as a reference for Midjourney to draw from. Let's get started. So recently I was exploring using Midjourney to make imagery for an article that I was writing about the ultimate desk setup for creatives. And I noticed that while the results by themselves, you know, they look great, right? They've got really cool color scheme, they've got interesting composition, but couldn't quite get the result I was looking for. So you can see I started with these prompts here and I'm using weights to influence the output such that it gives more emphasis to the parts that I'm adding the weights to with the syntax colon colon four colon colon five etc. I want a more digital painterly feel so we've got digital painting, digital art, art station reference, I've got aspect ratio 3-2 and stylize 800. I want something that feels vibrant and full of creativity like a painting. And as you can see I'm saying UX designer dancing at a standing desk, much as I'm doing right now, because I feel like this is a good way to keep your energy up during the day, stay flexible, reduce the stiffness and pain and stress in your shoulders so that you can maintain your creativity for longer periods of time. And so being able to stand at a standing desk and kind of wiggle and dance around was one thing that I wanted to highlight in this article. However, you can see that the output here, it doesn't show them standing. It's clearly a UX designer or a digital artist or a creative working at a desk, but they're kind of hunched over like this with weird posture. This guy, I don't know what he's doing. He's a pyromancer blowing up his computer. So I'm going with smiling designer. I want people who look like they're happy and having a good time with two monitors wearing headphones while working. Well, I've got some, like she's got headphones, but they don't, right? So the weights aren't necessarily cutting it. Working at a standing desk with good posture, mm, not necessarily, right? Colorful lighting, cartoon style, abstract graphic elements, all of these things seem to be just missing the mark when Midjourney is coming up with the output here. This one's getting a little bit closer. We've got some kind of abstract elements coming out of them as though it were a representation of the creativity that's flying off of them while they're working. So we've got the colorful lighting, some cartoonish style is coming through but we're still not getting the standing up in front of desk. Same deal here, lots of cool abstract elements and paint splatters and things coming out. And I like the image, but it's still just not what I'm after. So during this workflow, as I went deeper, I created more variations in hopes that I could continue to skew and influence the output. And again, you know, any one of these images on their own, it's pretty cool overall, but it's not what I'm asking for. So I'm liking a lot of the output in terms of the color palette and things like that, but not the pose, not the figurative expressive piece of the image, the subject of the person that you want to identify with, you want to identify with the emotion and expression and body feeling that I'm trying to communicate through the piece. But it's just not quite nailing the pose, it's the figure and the face and the hands that are gonna communicate the most emotion in the image and so I want to have more control over that. So I ran the experiment of just sketching my own composition. I downloaded a stock image of a person at a standing desk looking at a computer and I just traced over that in Procreate which is great for fine motor control on your iPad. Really recommend it. Lovely program. Once you've done that you send the image to the Discord chat like this and that produces a link. Then you can right click that image and copy link and paste that link directly into the prompt. So I've pasted the link into the prompt and continued to write the rest of my prompt in there. And you can see it immediately understands now that I'm after a standing pose. These people are all standing at the desk. They're still kind of faceless, but uh, the other thing that's interesting about this is that, well, I uploaded a black and white image, right? I'm saying things like colorful lighting, and it feels like it's trying to kind of split the difference between those things. We've got these plain white backgrounds and kind of dark, sketchy, comic booky outlines like the sketch, but it's starting to inject some color in there like it's a little bit confused. Again, these are pretty decent as far as something that I could embed in the body of an article or use as a thumbnail. It's still just not quite hitting the expression that I want. 
So I'm going to scroll down past a lot of other iterations and experiments. I experimented briefly with using the seed prompt, but from what I've heard, this gives pretty mixed results in general, and you can see this is not quite the vibe of what we're after. Next, I experimented with just the straight up stock photo by itself to see what it did. And while I am getting more of the position that I want, despite the fact that this guy is kind of looking off into space and not at the computer, or these people are actually sitting in chairs, I was really struck by this one. I thought, hey, this is pretty close to what I had in mind in my imagination. So I'm gonna produce some more variations of that. I also tried with another stock image to see if I could get some different results. We've still got this kind of white billowy shirt thing going on. It's okay, but it's a little bit more photographic than what I'm after, not to mention the weird hand ness going on here. So the next logical step was after using some stock photos and getting mixed results, I could tell that it was the color scheme that was influencing things quite a bit. The pose, the composition, and the color scheme. So what I did next was I just made my own quick sketch. I'll show you a time lapse from my Procreate workflow just to show you how quick and easy that is. So I exported a time lapse from Procreate you can see my process here. I just took a stock image that I found on the internet and traced over in Procreate. Super simple, not trying to win any awards on anatomy here, just trying to get the rough impression of the image to give Midjourney something to work from. Using various tools in Procreate right now to just kind of quickly sketch in the composition. Maybe some kind of abstract elements flying out of the screen, maybe some musical notes. We all know the feeling of being deep in your workflow, listening to your favorite playlist, enjoying the flow state of that. And then I saw that the colors influenced things so much from the original white sketch that I thought I would add in some nice purples and blues, give it kind of some teal plants in the background from other assets I had saved, and just quickly generated a reference. So as before, I uploaded the image and then sent the image as a chat message in Discord in my private server to with the Midjourney bot. Right click, copy link, for this first one, I just ran the experiment to see what does it do on its own. So I just added the link, and you can see that although the figure is sort of muddled in this one, it's understanding there's a computer screen, and it's understanding there's this kind of synthwave dreamlike palette of blues and purples. So that's something to work from. Now let's see if we can mold that raw clay. So when I added the link for that particular image in with the prompt that I was using before, we already are getting some interesting results here. So we've got the smiling finally. They're not just faceless people kind of with their cold shoulder turned to the viewer. They look a little bit cartoony and elongated, which is cool. I kind of like that caricature kind of style they're turning away from the computers and kind of smiling at the camera, which is getting closer, but still not quite what we want. Then from here, we started getting closer to what I had in mind. They're standing at the desk. They've got kind of a, a funky creative vibe in terms of their affect with the hair and the tattoos and things. They're turning and looking at the computer screen. They're standing at the desk. This is getting much closer. Side profile shot of smiling designer with two monitors, wearing headphones, working on a UI design standing up in front of the desk with good posture. Got some other good outputs here. I like some of these, so I started generating variations of each of these concurrently. So here we go. He's standing, he's smiling. He's got some colorful creativity going on. This is much closer to what I had in mind. Some more cool variations here. I like the color scheme and the lighting. So since I could see how much the color scheme was coming across, I decided to do a variation with a brighter, lighter color scheme, keeping the blues and the purples, but going kind of light theme instead of dark theme. And right away, you can see how much that influences the output. We've got this kind of cool minty green teal with light background color scheme happening. At this point, I am adding more to the prompt, such as cool green rim lighting, light blue key lighting, colorful lighting, and seeing that that further inflects the image. Not bad, not bad. So what do I actually do with all these images in this output? Well, I am a designer and so I'm a Figma head. So I took all of those images and dropped them into Figma. Why? So that I have a canvas view. I like having the ability to kind of pan around so that I can see things at a glance and have more dimensionality in terms of how I move through all the different options that I've laid out for myself so that I can zoom in, pick a few, and then using tricks like holding command, I can keep the image non-destructively, but kind of hide the ones that I don't want, and then kind of stick together the ones that I like so that I can make a set of four just to show the sheer power of 
the volume of how much quantity you can output with these tools. And I started to assemble those into quads that I wanted to embed in my article and went through kind of a refinement process of picking out the ones that I thought went well together and putting them in the right order mixed in with the other imagery I had in the article and finally came out with this final set. I like this one as the thumbnail that kind of gives the impression she's standing at the desk. She's got her creativity bursting through her laptop set up here with her widescreen. She's got her yoga mat. Uh, and then we've got some other ones that I just liked. The overall color and feeling added some smiles with the liquify tool in Photoshop. Pasted images from other mid-journey prompts for UI designs like this onto their screen so it looks more like they're actually designing something for a product instead of just kind of random gobbledygook on their monitors. Got some more here with some mobile designs and some data visualizations. That concludes what I wanted to share. This is a great way to organize the output for your mid-journey work stream. You can paste this stuff into Figma and further refine it. You can immediately copy and paste it from Figma into Photoshop for further tweaking and refinement back into Figma. And then the way I like to work is I found it really helpful when writing, doing blog posts, lay it out in Figma because then you can kind of pick and choose chunks of text and pick insert the images without kind of doing the intensive work of actually writing the HTML or using a code editor to kind of get the, the first draft out. You can just use this as a way to lay out the imagery and decide what you need, where you want it, and uh, kind of go back in and fill in the gaps as you need it. So that's my handy hack for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. If you want to see more content that blends the world's of AI art and creativity and UX design, and I'll look forward to pumping out another video for y'all to enjoy real soon. Cheers. Peace.